thumbnail, thumbnail shot. You know in, the, in YouTube videos where they like leave that in, where they're like, so, sorry, okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Kim. I'm a cooking columnist for the New York Times. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make kimchi. I think the main thing I wanna say, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. As long as you know the basic steps, which involve brining the cabbage, saucing the cabbage, and tossing the cabbage like a salad, that's it, it's three steps. So I'm gonna show you those three steps across three different recipes. We're gonna make a very basic kimchi. And then the second one, is a, a white version, and it's called pet kimchi. And one of the main differences is just that we're not gonna use the kochukaru, that red pepper powder. And then the last one is the very special grand finale kimchi, which is a tongbechu kimchi, which is a whole Napa cabbage kimchi. And that just means that instead of chopping up the cabbage into pieces when we brine it, we are going to cut them in half and brine them as like whole heads. So kimjang is the communal act of kimchi making and sharing. I really like the story of kimjang because it, it tells the tale of resilience and survival. One thing that I really found while reporting this story, people who grew up with it grew up with it in Korea. Like in Korea is where um, people would have kimjangs with their neighborhood or more often than not with families. Korea had a really dramatic history and I think this food item is something that helped people survive, and that's something that needs to be said. I really can't talk about kimchi without talking about my mother, because she's the one I learned it from. I grew up helping her taste as she made kimchi, and back then, she was using iodized, like, Morton table salt, you know, like from the little container, you know, with the, the umbrella girl who's spilling all that salt, so wasteful. That salt is what she would use to brine the cabbage. She would also have this huge bag of granulated sugar. And I just remember I would go to the pantry to grab that bag and it'd be like stained with kochukaru because it's like the bag she used for kimchi. I just thought that was like funny. I guess we can get started. We can start ch chopping some cabbage. So these have all been rinsed, by the way. What I like to do is cut across. And what you end up with are these little ribbons of kimchi. I'm just chopping into like one inch thick slices. This is gonna make one jar of kimchi. Let's do the second one. This is gonna be our pek kimchi, which is the white kimchi. It's basically the same recipe, you just don't have the kochukaru. And the brining time for this one's actually a little shorter. Some people like to core the, the cabbage. I, I kind of don't care because I, I like slice it like that, you know. This piece, by the time it brines, is gonna look like this. It's gonna look much smaller because these little, little frilly parts, they really shrink up. And now I'm gonna show you what to do for the tongbechu kimchi. What my mom does is she chops like just the bottom and then she kind of like splits it open so that it tears organically. And so you have this kind of adorable ruffled kind of look. I'm gonna rinse these. This is our regular kimchi. It's gonna get five tablespoons of diamond crystal kosher salt or three tablespoons of coarse kosher salt, AKA Morton. This gets the same amount, so. Um, gently toss, but sometimes when I'm at home and my bowl is really small and it's like overflowing a little bit, I'll just like leave it like that because it's gonna shrink. And when it shrinks, it's much easier to toss. I'll show you. And you do wanna toss it occasionally so that the salt really distributes. But these, I start with like the outside and I kind of like, just like really, really get in there, you know? The cabbages are gonna let out their own water and that water will mix in with the salt and become, essentially become the brine. How, how many minutes has it been? Maybe like 10 minutes? Um, do you see how it's, can you see that it's already like shrunk a little bit? Now we're gonna make the sauce. The things that these kimchi sauces have in common are onion, garlic, ginger, fish sauce, and some kind of fruit. My mom does this and I've inherited her method and I really appreciate the flavor of her kimchi sauce. 
It is pretty fish saucy. It's very chokkal heavy, and chokkal is salted seafood. The question I get asked the most is, how do I replace the fish sauce? The fish sauce is the one thing that makes this not vegan, right? And what I say to that is, I have to success used a mixture of soy sauce and tenjang or miso. I'm gonna make the sauce for the basic kimchi. This sauce is very balanced. It has sugar. It has salty umami fish sauce. It has like the pungency of all the alliums. I'm actually like so bad at peeling apples. <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> These go in. Yum. All of the garlic. These are fibrous, so I might go chop it a little bit. <laughs> you can do this by grating it. It'll just take you longer, obviously. <laughs> Yummy. And I'm not gonna wash this because I'm gonna make two more. But first, I'm gonna finish this. Gochugaru is a Korean red pepper powder. I think people sometimes call it Korean chili flakes, but it confuses people because it makes it seem like these are much hotter than they are. They're kind of closer to an Aleppo pepper. And the reason the gochukaru is going in now is because I want the flakes to still be, you know, coarse. There's like the puree, and then there are kind of like the more whole vegetables, right? They're sort of like the flavorings. Because scallions lend an incredible kamchimat, savoriness, and the carrot adds a little sweetness. These whole vegetables get added. So satisfying. Just chop it into like one inch pieces. And just stir this all together. And this is your kimchi sauce. Let me know in the comments if your family adds pine nuts to their kimchi. I asked my mom why she does it and she said she didn't know why. It's just because her mother did it. So what happens is you get one pine nut kind of like pop in your mouth like occasionally and it's always a surprise. And they also ferment themselves. They get like a Sprite-like bubbly kind of effervescence. Kimchi sauce number one. Now we're gonna make the white sauce for the pet kimchi. Basically the same thing as that, but we just use an Asian pear instead. And the only difference with this one is there's no uh, gochugaru. Notice how this one's a little more liquidy, and it's because, ooh, nice. Because of the Asian pear, it's a little more watery. Remember how in the red one we did scallion and carrot, right? I'm going to add thinly sliced half moons of this daikon. Lauren Chun said, if you can make a salad, you can make kimchi. I think that is very true. Look at that. This is what I figured out. I, I didn't like look this up or anything, so there's probably a way better way, but I'm gonna cut um, little pieces out of it, maybe like five, so that it looks like a little flower. Cut out little like divots. You want it to be pretty even across. I'm sure yours will be much prettier than this. Not bad. Slice them very thinly. And these are really just garnish. The more jars of kimchi you make, the more you'll learn. Now I'm gonna make the tongbechu kimchi sauce. This one relies heavily on apple. Same formula, fruit, garlic, onion, ginger. Fish sauce, yummy. The sugar helps with the fermentation actually. The puree goes in here. Just thinly slice them. The last thing is some gochugaru. Stir all this together. Mmm, this smell is really just so familiar to me. We have our three sauces. I'm gonna check on our brine cabbages and rinse them and combine them. <laughs> Can you, t like, look at that. It's amazing. We ha it was like up to here, remember that? This though, these need to go for an hour or two more because they're, you know, they're whole and they're gonna take a little longer to tr properly brine through. So I'm gonna flip them. People do this in, in a bowl, but I really think when it comes to the whole cabbage, it's really nice, especially with a small kitchen, to just use a sheet pan. I'm gonna go rinse these both and drain them and return them to their bowls. And now we just have to toss everything together.
before I do any saucing, your hands are going to be kind of like messy, so you want the jars to be already open and kind of ready to go. There's like really nothing to this, you just toss it like a salad. Some of the vegetables, the whole vegetables in the sauce, you'll notice will have maybe some liquid, and that's good. I'm taking one of the jars, add it to the jar as neatly as you can. And I pack it down lightly. That's the way um, all this is gonna fit. You don't wanna pack it too tight, but you know, tight enough. I have a little extra here. That, that will happen sometimes. This is kimchi actually that I think I'll set aside so that I can eat it with my friends, kind of like fresh before it ferments. You do want to leave like about an inch, you know, from the top, because as this ferments, it's sort of gonna expand a little. The question I also often get is, what kind of jar to use? And I'm gonna show you a bunch of jars in a second, but my favorite is a glass jar with a lid that's not too tight, just like a top. So it's like pretty loose, but nothing's gonna get in, but it's not airtight. This is important because as the kimchi ferments, it's going to expand. And you want to leave room for that air. I like this one a lot because you can really taste the cabbage, you can taste the sweetness of the vegetables themselves. With the pet kimchi, it's a little more watery than that red kimchi that we just made. So because of that, I wanna make sure that I don't stuff these too much. Like, I find that it's the pet kimchi that really like effervesces. Jar number two. This has been brining for about three to four hours. Visually, what you're looking for is that it's like Pretty like limp, but you do want it to still have a nice like crunch, you know? Rinse and drain cabbage, clean bowl. You wanna get the outside like that. There's not really like a science to this. You're just sort of like smearing it on. Oh, see, I forgot to leave the jar open and now I have to open the jar with dirty hands, so. Okay, it's not the end of the world. So you see how I'm, I'm really just like pulling back each individual leaf and making sure there's like a little sauce in each one. Some of them will have little apple pieces tucked in, some of them will have scallions, some of them won't. Okay, these are done. This is the fun part. <clears throat> you take it and there's like the like leafy end. You sort of like tuck it into, you like tuck it over itself, turning into a compact little thing, little like cabbage patch baby. And then you're just inserting it into the jar. And what you do is each time you want to eat it, you just like take one individual head out and then you, you chop it up. I just wanted to show you like another example of the kind of container you can use. We made three kimchis. The reason there are these three jars behind them is that these are the versions that I made months ago. So this is like a very old jar of tongbechu kimchi. This is a pet kimchi, but instead of the carrot, I did a little julienne beetroot. And this is, the regular kimchi, and it's just been a few, it's been a few weeks. You see the color difference. These kimchis that we just jarred, you know, these are fresh kimchis, we're gonna let them begin the fermentation process at room temperature on the counter. And I usually do that for about two days. Every 12 hours, what you wanna do is this. You just wanna like check it and just make sure it's doing okay. And you wanna release some gas. We just turn this many vegetables into three adorable little jars. These kimchis will last in your refrigerator for up to six months. I think one of the kind of historical meanings of kimjang is, is the communal aspect of it. You are making kimchi with your friends, your family, your neighbors. UNESCO designated kimjang as an intangible cultural heritage. And I love that because what it means is that it's not just to make food and to have the kimchi, it's to share and spread the knowledge of the kimchi making. A living like heritage like that, it's not a monument, it's not a building, it's not something that you can preserve through like physical means, it's like knowledge. The reason to have a kimjang is to make sure that knowledge, uh, <laughs> like getting emotional or something, it's important for living knowledge like that to not die. And I think that's a really lovely thing. It sort of represents the passing of, of heritage, what you're doing with this cabbage, you're salting it so that it doesn't go bad, so that you can eat it forever, or like up to six months. This is sort of like a virtual kimjang that we're having. I'd like to propose that everyone make kimchi this weekend.
the secret thing that I've been bubbling away over here is a pekin chichige, and we're going to set up the table so that we can have a meal. Okay. Thank you for coming. This is a pek kimchi jjigae. We're at the end of a long kimjang day. I brought some friends. I wanted them to taste the kimchi. I wanted them to celebrate with me. I also just wanted to treat them to some food. Okay, so who do you have here? Susan Kim. Susan was um, incredibly helpful in the writing of this story. This is sort of like our first time meeting, but we've sort true. of like long time fans of each other, I think. Our very own Kei Chun, um, long time contributor to NYT Cooking. You joined me for the, the Pugogi video. I did. But um, I don't know, Kei's sort of my, uh, my colleague whose work I really you know, respect as well. Darren, thank you Darren for coming. Darren is our product manager. She moonlights as a Korean recipe developer for us sometimes. But um, let's eat. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get us some rice first. Okay. Everyone eats meat, right? Yeah. <laughs> My mouth is literally watering. What are your kimchi making kind of traditions or memories? My parents kind of reached a point at which when their parents passed away, they realized they never held on to the kimchi making traditions. Right. And so my parents actually call their kimchi Google kimchi because whatever pops up first is the kimchi they make. Oh, but they do the whole that. thing where they like bury it in their backyard. Really? They do? They use like the Napa cabbage that they grow in their garden. Oh, wow. So Sorry, I should have asked if this is how you eat kimchi jjigae. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how your family eats That's it. How our, yeah, yeah, yeah. It tastes this broth. You know what I'm gonna say about the broth? What? It's really kekete. <laughs> it's like just yeah. like so clean. This isn't my best work, but. <laughs> Eric, come on. <laughs> Eric. That word kekete or kekatanma, clean taste, those words like are huge compliments. It's so good. How often do you make kimchi? Pretty often. I make really? it for, yeah, yeah, I make it for myself or my mom and just, oh, cool. yeah, it's like it. When I was back home, I made a jar of kimchi. We had guests coming over. I was like, should we give them some of the kimchi? Because it's like a nice gift. And she was like, no, not this jar. This is like my son, like my son's oh. gifting me kimchi. That was like very special to her. Oh. And then she ate it and she was like, hmm, this tastes weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want you to try some of, this is, you have to do, eat all the, okay. <laughs> Do yeah. all your mothers do yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> everyone did that, yeah. That's such a mom thing. Yeah, full service. Thank you. That's also a move, putting mm -hmm. panchan on your bowl. Oh yeah, and someone else's. There's I, a lot of force yeah. feeding in our There's culture. a lot of force feeding. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of control. Devin's here? Oh, Devin's gonna have his butt. Yeah. You wanna give it to him, Eric? You wanna do the uh, honors? <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. He's a little independent, and he likes to eat on his own. Okay, okay go ahead. Kimchi. Try it. More. Oh, Save he more. loves it. He loves Save it. More. Thank you guys for coming. This is really fun. And it's nice to not uh, do this alone, you know?